Hi guys, Zondra here from Conveyor Random Us here, and today I'll be asking, is the Apple Watch Series 3 still a viable option now that the Apple Watch Series 6 and SE have just come out? September or September 2020 has brought along the announcement of the next evolutionary stage of the Apple Watch Series. From the Apple Watch Series 5, which was announced in 2019, to its successor, the Apple Watch Series 6, priced from £379, and a mid-range Apple Watch SE, priced from £269. It came as a nice surprise to me, as an owner myself, that Apple were keeping the Apple Watch Series 3 as the entry-level watch at the same starting price from £199. So, as there is now a three-tier Apple Watch hierarchy, is the Apple Watch the Series 3 still worth getting? The Series 3 has the older style look with its solid rectangular body, digital crown on the right with a speaker and microphone on the left. The current design of the watches has been present since the slight redesign in the Series 4. The Series 6 and SE have larger identical size displays with more rounded edges and greater screen to display ratio when compared to the Series 3. Both are available in the 40 or 44mm sizes while the Series 3 is available in sizes 38 or 42mm. The Series 6 is loaded with Apple's most advanced dual-core processor in the S6, which is based on the A13 chip found in the iPhone 11, while the SE has the S5 chip and the Series 3 has the S3 chip. Both the 6 and the SE are equipped with the W3 wireless chip, and only the 6 has the U1 chip used in processes such as AirDrop and will become an important part of Apple's venture with AirTags. As a result of these processes, the SE is twice as fast as the Series 3, and the Series 6 is 20% faster than the SE. All three watches run Apple's latest software, Watch OS 7, and are water resistant up to 50 meters, but who's trying that anyway? The SE and the Series 6 have a 30 gigabyte capacity and available in GPS and cellular models, compared to the 8 gigabyte capacity and the availability only as a GPS model on the Series 3. The Series 6 and the SE also share the always-on altimeter, built-in compass, fall detection and noise monitoring, all things that are missing from the Series 3. If you don't mind the aluminium finish, then this is the only finish that is available to both the Series 3 and the SE. As well as aluminium, the Series 6 is also available in stainless steel and titanium. One of the main highlights of the Apple Watch experience is the health monitoring. First, with the heart rate monitor, which features on all three watches, the 3, the SE and the 6. Since the Series 4, and not including the SE, we've seen the addition of the electrical heart rate sensor built into the digital crown, which allows you to take your own ECG. On top of this, and new to the Series 6, is the new blood oxygen sensor, which is a great visual health addition to the Series. Anything, as long as it's accurate, that provides general health fitness and wellness feedback to the user, is a great tool that aids in promoting a healthy lifestyle of oneself. I'm certainly an advocate of trying to close my daily rings, and I often check the fitness app on my iPhone to see how well I'm doing in certain areas and where improvements can be made. But it is important to stress that these health monitoring features are there for guidance and shouldn't be taken as a substitute for genuine medical advice. In fact, Apple recommend that their ECG app shouldn't be used by people under the age of 22 or persons who have a history in atrial fibrillation. Only the Series 6 has the always on display, which I'm sure you'll realise how important this is when you've actually got the watch on or are transferring straight over from an analogue or digital watch. With the Series 3, you need to just raise your arm to, or tap the display to wake the watch to display the time. I think you get into the, the mindset of automatically raising your arm to tell the time. I mean, it's certainly a battery saver in the Series 3 that it hasn't got the always on display as it would heavily diminish the 18 hour battery life. But funnily enough, all three watches have battery life of up to 18 hours. Being the cheapest, the Series 3 would be best for anyone wanting that entry-level Apple Watch. While it lacks many of the Series 6 features, it still has a lot of great features which, which still allow you to track your fitness workouts and health stats, use the built-in GPS, monitor your heart rate, make calls, respond to messages, talk to Siri, use Apple Pay, feel safe with the emergency SOS feature, and so much more. The mid-range Apple Watch SE has more of the features of the 6 at a more affordable price, lower than that of the Series 6, but higher than the entry-level Series 3. If you want the modern up-to-date specs, but you don't want the cost of the 6, then the SE is just for you. The 6 has all of those great features, including the ECG monitoring and the new blood oxygen sensor, available at a premium price. If you want a great high-end watch that probably stands clear at the top of all-rounders, 
then the Series 6 is for you. Upgrading from a Series 5 is probably unlikely as there are only a few new additions from the watch that came out last year. So there's still room and a market for the Apple Watch Series 3. The experience and the interface will be the same apart from those extra features no matter which Apple Watch you choose. If you've got an Apple Watch or not and are thinking about buying or upgrading to a Series 3, 6 or SE just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video give it a like and if you're new to the channel a subscription will be greatly appreciated and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today I will see you on the next one. Bye.